not so specific. Um, I was not a theology major. I was not a communications major. I was a music and worship major, which means this thing is foreign to me. So turn to your neighbor and say, extend grace. Extend grace. All of you theology majors and public speaking and all that, if I had a hat, I'd tip that thing, because my goodness, this is not easy. Um, two things, so uh, that's the first. Second, um, I need two brutally honest students. One, just come, come up, see you, come on up. Brutally honest. We got somebody in the back back there, like brutally. Boom, bingo, brother, come on up, come on up. Clap it up for your peers as they come up. Clap it up, clap it up. <laughs> yeah, come on over. I want you to grab that mic over there for me. Y'all know these cats? Am I all right? Am I? Should I be nervous? Yes, <laughs> I mean, you got, you got friends. Like friends, friends. Uh, all right, so um, what's your name? Hi, guys, what's your name? Same mic. Yeah. Uh, John Butler, if you don't know. John Butler, hello. Yeah. Uh, Zachary. Zachary. Yeah. Nice shot. Zach the Mac. You know what I'm saying? All right. So really quickly, really quickly, um, I need you just really quickly um, to give me your personal definition of worship. What is worship? <laughs> Take the lead, man. I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, one word: sacrifice. Sacrifice. Cool. Yeah. That's Sorry. way better than what I had Sorry. in my head. Shoot. I don't know. My, I guess my definition of it is just in everything I do, try and do it for the Lord. If it's read a book, watch a movie, Sick. go to class, whatever, just find a way to worship him in it. Cool. So uh, here's my next thing. So what I'm going to do, right? Um, mm. I'm going to sing in the worship style that I'm used to when I'm in my, my own personal worship time. And what I want you both to do and what I want us all to think about is my why behind my worship style. Yeah, yeah. My why, why do I do it the way I do? Yeah, no I know it. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Lord, revive us again. You Please don't. Please, please. Don't. Now, I, that didn't sound like uh, gross. Because that's not what I meant. But usually, like, that's what we do, right? But that's not the purpose of it, right? What are your thoughts? What's my why? Zach the Mac. No, no. Zach the Mac, he's no, we'll on the tacky in the channel. She's telling you. No, you go for it. Um, I mean, I want to clap. See, I, I, right? Yeah, no, I'm I, not conceited. I thought no. that was like. That was good. Thank you, sir. Like, I heard it with my ears. You guys are hearing it through the speakers. It's way better up here. Oh, sick. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm not sure what to, uh, like, what to say about it. Like, I don't know. It, it's just, like, it's a feeling in my heart. Like, when I hear people, like, sing like that, it's, um, like, when they sing from their heart, it's not just, like, you know, sit there and you analyze it and we're joking like, oh, we can take notes. But like, no, it's just, it, it's more than like the intellectual side of it. It's like, you know, where, where's your heart at? You know, uh, yeah. Cool, yeah. thanks. Cool, cool. Zach the Mac, he's on the Tekken Southern hey, Hall. Hey, hey, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, the first thing I thought was, you know, when you close your eyes and I was, I was trying to analyze it, I was like, okay, you know, this is not a performance, like this is a straight expression. And you know, I've, I, look, I felt like, okay, there is definitely a relationship, a connection, 
and there's something deeper than just the words that you use, how you said it, it's all very intentional to show your appreciation to God for something, whatever it was that he's done in your past. It's kind of what I was getting at. And I was super oh. vibing off it, you know cool. what I'm saying? Yeah. Clap it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank Clap you guys. Clap it up, clap it up. We're done? We're yeah, good? all good. Cool, thank you guys cool, so much. Cool, I'm done bugging you. And where I think those were absolutely wonderful answers, the real reason behind my, the way that I worship or one of them is because the Lord saw fit for Disney Plus to come into my life. And I didn't think that I would be able to experience and be able to imagine that I was Princess Jasmine again or that uh, I was one of the Darkwing Ducks. Y'all don't know about Darkwing Duck? Listen, take a stroll down memory lane in Jesus' name. It'll bless your life. Uh, so uh, I wanted to talk a little bit tonight um, when I was invited. Thank you guys so much for inviting me out to speak tonight. Um, I was invited to speak about the differences of worship styles that we have here. Um, and I want you all tonight to hear my heart because I don't come from a place of malice or judgment or I know more than you because I really don't. And I want you to hear my heart and I really hope you do. And don't make me cry in the emails that you're gonna send to Mike later, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, um, uh, I, uh, I had a homegirl, and we've grown up together all our lives, best of friends. Um, but she had a really interesting life. She had one of those, one of those experiences where she comes to you like, "Girl, I gotta talk to you," and you like, <sighs> "Like, won't you just sit down? Maybe if you just sit down and take a nap, your life will be just take a nap, just go to sleep. You'll be just fine." Um, <laughs> and. Um, she tells me about uh, her story. We had separated um, when I first got to, or graduated from high school. I went to Colorado State University and she stayed home. Um, she ended up having a baby really young at the age of 20 um, in September of 2009, I believe. Um, and the day after her son was born, her son's father comes in because the baby came unexpectedly. And he says, I'm gonna go home real quick. I gotta go get some clothes. I'm gonna go grab a bite for us to eat. I'll be right back. She was like, cool. He walks out the door. She doesn't see him again for another six months. Um, when she sees him again, it's rather uncomfortable, as it might be. Um, and in April of 2010, my friend was involved in a domestic violence dispute with her son's father. Now, the way domestic violence works these days is whoever looks worse is the victim. Now, my friend um, knows how to defend herself very well, in Jesus' name. <laughs> so unfortunately, she had to go to jail. She went to jail, um, but it was an amazing story. Uh, turns out when she gets out, uh, she was f supposed to find out what she was charged with w upon booking, but she didn't find out until she faced the judge. Five counts of random things, domestic violence, I think child abuse, I think two assault with the deadly weapons, real deep stuff. Um, and her father is an officer. Her mother works at JPL. And both of them were like, listen, don't fight this. Take the deal. Now, the deal was if you don't fight this, you get five years upstate, a child chilla, uh, women's state, prison, you will lose custody of your child, and you'll be on probation for a year after you get out. What? For being a victim, she was like, nah, brother. So she told me, uh, she told the Lord, if you get me out of this one, I'll dedicate every fiber of me to you. The next morning was the third day of the trial, I believe, and her son's father walked in, and they had probably like two minutes of conversation on that topic. And the judge says, clearly, you're not the one that's supposed to be here. So she told my friend that you're free to go that same day. Her fa son's father walked in, and he was arrested and put into prison. The son's father's mother lied on the stand against her and got hit with perjury. Um, and something else happened. Uh, there was a moment where her son's father was in jail. And the Lord fought her battle in such a way that her, her son's father almost lost his life in prison. Uh, but you know, she's out, she's thriving, she's, she's good, and her son is growing up beautifully. Um, and uh, yeah, that's my homegirl. So I wanted to walk you through a little bit of stuff, right? So she tells me about this one story 
Um, I want you to pay no attention to my little things, right? So, um, again, I'm not a public speaker. I just got to figure out where I'm at. I don't want to get lost. So you'll see it says, yo, Miriam, sis, you good? I'll do it again from this side. Yo, Miriam, sis, you good? <laughs> Middle. Hey, y'all. Yo, Miriam, sis, are you good? Right? She tells me about this one time when she was in jail. She, um, so please don't ever go to jail. Let my story be enough for you, okay? Let this, don't go. Um, but when, when, um, before you get separated into general population, everybody is kind of put into the same little area. So the brown and the blue shirts are people who are just regular, no, like, violent offenses or no drug-related things or just in jail because it was a bad day. Um, the yellow shirts are the ones who aren't really well mentally or they're coming off of drugs, they're going through some sort of withdrawal, blah, blah, blah. And the orange shirts, we already know that's murder, so um, it, was real, it was real interesting. So her whole time she got switched out and swapped out with people in blue shirts and yellow shirts and orange shirts, and her last bunkie had an orange shirt. And her bunkie says to her, with tears in her eyes, I'm 24 years old from Inglewood, California. I have 10 children, and I am facing 30 years for a double homicide. Will you sing me, Jesus loves me? So my friend obliges, and she tells me that she felt like that moment had a lot to do with the way her situation ended up panning out. And when she told me that story, I thought about Miriam. So I told you I was a music and worship major. Um, and I thought about this topic of worship. We've already talked about how worship is more than just singing. Um, my homeboy John said that it was sacrifice. Zach said it was banners of the heart, right? So if you guys could, I wanted to take you guys through Miriam's song. Now, Miriam was the sister of Brother Aaron, Aaron and Moses. You remember the story of those two, right? Yeah, you guys read your Bible still? Okay, great. Um, can we put up Exodus up there really quick? I wanted to take you through her song, both looking at the content of it um, and just the way she sung it. So it starts off real to herself, I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him, right? Right? Real personal to herself. Can we fast forward a little bit? I encourage you to go back and look at her stuff. It's real like, boom, bam, Pharaoh's dead. Jesus is Lord. Right? It's real. It's real in there. But when you skip down to verse 19, her song changes a little bit. And it's, it's rather demanding, if you will, and inclusive. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. Now imagine you were just some random person with your little bag. I don't care what's in your bag, but it's a little bag, right? And you happen to see a whole bunch of people coming out of the sea randomly. All of them are dry. And you hear, all of them are dry first. They're dry. And then you hear this random lady with a timbrel, whatever the heck that is, <laughs> walking around talking about, ooh, horses dead in the sea. Feral, boom, gone, thing of the past, right? <laughs> and she's encouraging people to sing with her. What are your thoughts? Yo, Miriam, sis. Now, I want to tell you all, because I'm not a pastor, the more you've talked back at me, the quicker I wrap up in Jesus' name. Yeah? Uh, so, yo, Miriam. God bless you. That's me, for real. And honestly, this is my face if I saw Miriam. Girl, what? What? <laughs> Ma'am, what are you 
talking about? What are we do? What? What are we doing here? How did you walk out of the ocean bone dry, talking about horses? First off, I love horses. Don't touch them, babies. You can take cats all you want to, because cats are evil. They're they're evil. They're evil. Because first off, I I paid too much money for this this meow mix. You'd be walking around here looking at me like I owe you rent, okay? <laughs> Now, so it's a little bit of a disagreement already. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we talking about here? But it's kind of like the same theory, right? <clears throat> If a tree falls in the forest and no one is there, does it make a sound? Still unsettled. I still hear like yes, no, yes, no, right? The consensus is con what? The consensus. Is yes, right? Because we've developed different things of technology that tells us so. We understand science. We've understood the law of physics. We understand music and sound and the way that it carries. So just because we weren't there doesn't mean the tree didn't make a sound, right? The reason Miriam's song is so unfamiliar to me is because I wasn't there. I wasn't there when she was locked away. I wasn't there to watch this random cloud in the daytime guiding us. This is my GPS, and then at night some fire guiding me to this random ocean, and then I see my homeboy Moses holding his hand over it all night, like he's sprinkling lorries or salt and sugar or whatever, like, <laughs> and then it randomly spreading. I wasn't there. Her worship style is much different than mine. Simply because of the content of her testimony. Thanks. Um, <laughs> um, the impact naturally is going to be different when you experience other people's worship styles because you weren't there, and it's okay because now you get to be privy and you have a front seat to what the Lord did on behalf of somebody else. But understand that there will come a moment where you are the unfamiliar worship style. And you will edify your neighbor with your freedom in your worship. Uh, so uh, I thought about this whole thing, right? And I'm reminded of uh, another worship experience. In Acts uh, 10 and 15, we come across my homeboy Peter, and uh, yeah, Simon, that one, Simon Peter, and. Uh, Peter was pretty cool because he was so outspoken, a lot like I am. I mean, I didn't cut anybody's ear off, but you know, we we see eye to eye sometimes. Um, question: How many in here have walked, like physically walked, next to Jesus for three years? So Simon, the rock on which the church should be built. The one who walked with Jesus still didn't have it down correctly. Let me show you Acts 10 and 15. Just to kind of give you a quick synopsis. Synopsis. At the top of Acts 10, there's this homeboy. His name is、uh, Cornelius. He's a centurion man. Now we all know the centurions and the Jews didn't necessarily get along. You know what I'm saying? They didn't come to the potlucks. Blah blah blah. blah.、Um, and Cornelius, though, was a God-fearing man. He often gave to the poor. He often sacrificed himself and gave and did the things that pleased the Lord. And the Lord one day came to him in a dream, and he、uh, he told him that he noticed everything that he was doing for the kingdom of heaven, and he was pleased with it. And he told him to send for Peter.、He、says okay. The very next day, it says that about noon, the Lord came to Peter three times in a vision, and he told Peter each time in this vision, "Get up." Go out there and kill that food and eat it. Simon says, "Excuse me, <laughs> that's unclean. I don't do that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not eating none of that food." And the Lord, right here in this scripture, says, "Don't ever call what I've made clean common. Ever." The thing about Simon Peter and、uh, the centurion man is that they came from two different worlds. Immediately,、uh, but one thing that they overlooked is their common denominator, which was Jesus. How often, Biola family, do we find error in other worship styles? 
and completely overlook our common denominator, which is Christ. There is a middle ground here that we're not quite seeing. I can't tell you what heaven sounds like, but I can assure you that this middle ground is a piece of heaven's why. Uh, sometimes when we speak about other worship styles, what we say doesn't always just offend us here on earth. Peter made a comment about an unclean thing and Jesus defended that unclean thing and reminded Peter of what this all was about. Uh, can I talk to you all as family? Yeah? I mean, I won't come over for Thanksgiving, it's fine. But can, can we talk as family? I had the privilege of leading you all into worship for Tori. And there were some great comments, like, Asia girl, <laughs> you been singing, girl? Great, thanks, because my voice feels like Ash Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it was real. You know what I'm saying? There were some real affirming ones. And then there were others <laughs> that I'm sure all of you heard about. And please, hear me. I'm not coming from a place, again, of malice, of anger. It's okay. It's all good. But one thing that we have to remember is that we're, this, the worship style that we're speaking about is not the person's worship style, but it is an attribute of heaven. So if you disagree with a worship style and it hinders or inhibits you from entering into the presence of the Lord for yourself, I encourage us all to examine our personal worship style. Are you mad at me yet? Great. All right. Let's keep moving. <laughs> Great. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, the reason I bring up Tori is because the same thing happened between Simon and Cornelius. In Acts 15, you see the Lord kind of checking, um, checking Peter and letting him know this isn't really how it's supposed to go. But in Acts 27, so eventually Peter, you know, decides... Uh, okay, Lord, these people are coming for me. You told me that they're coming to get me. I shouldn't be afraid. I'm going to come out and respond. And Peter comes over to Cornelius' house. When he first walks in, uh, there's a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone unpure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Before that question, he says, I came without raising any objection. May I submit to you that integration calls, or excuse me, this middle ground that I'm talking about calls for a willingful integration. It is one thing to not understand a worship style and another to disagree, but it's a completely different world to not want to integrate and understand other worship styles. We have the liberty and the freedom to ask one another about them. Watch this. Can I talk to you real quick? Right here in the blonde in the, or the, the hoodie where well, you got the messy bun. Hey boo, how you doing? How you doing, girl? You good? It, it's all right. It's all right. My voice, I'm telling you, I sound like Earl Jones, James Earl Jones this morning. Okay? Simba. That's who I was. Uh, what's your favorite ice cream? I honestly can't stand mint chip. What is it about mint chip that you like so much? The chocolate and the mint marrying. Oh, okay. Well, I like pecan praline. The Holy Ghost. <laughs> I love it, right? But the common denominator is the fact that we both enjoy ice cream. It's really just as simple as that. You can disagree with something in a healthy way. There's a, what's your name? Me and Danielle, Danielle and I, for you uh, English majors. <laughs> Danielle and I, 
willfully met in the middle. The Lord says, I will know you by the love that you have for one another. And it's not much deeper than that. Yes, we become uncomfortable, right? Let me make this real uncomfortable. I'm black. I'm black. I'm a black woman with tattoos who, uh, who eats Funyuns when she shouldn't, but whatever. Does that change how you operate in your household? Does that change the way the Lord looks at you? No. We can healthily live in our differences. We can absolutely help lift up, encourage, and sustain one another in this middle ground. Tell your neighbor, meet me in the middle. 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 So I want to leave you with something. There's a, uh, I told you about my homegirl. I told you about all this stuff uh, that she overcame in the moment in her worship style that did something for her. Um, and I don't wish that you knew my homegirl because you do. I am her. April 17, 2010, my son's father decided he wanted to put his hands around my neck while my son was in my arms. And I said, no, sir. My father has been an LAPD officer since the day that I was born. I was literally born, well, not born. My mother went into, the, into labor in the audience as he was graduating. My mother works at JPL now, terrified, trembling, Asia, please, 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 you can't win this. You're going to go to jail. My father, Asia, I know the law. I know the law. You're not going to make it. There's no favor in this for you. All five of his family members that sat on that stand, lifting their right hand and the left placed on the Bible, saying that they would solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, when all they did was lie. Everything around me said, Asia, no, your worship style isn't strong enough. Who you are isn't treasure, treasured enough and valued enough in the Lord's eyes. You will go to jail. And when that baby asked me to sing for her, how could I say no? When my own freedom was being denied, I can't even give her the liberty of the Lord. Yes, I can. There was a point in Miriam's song that started off about her, 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 me, 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 staying right here, and that's not to offend anybody, but somewhere in there, she remembered the mighty, the mighty hand of the Lord and the way he uh, pro provided over not just her life, but the fleet of Israelites behind her. And in the end of it, she became empowered in her worship style, and she said, you sing and dance with me. In this middle ground, Peter said, I will, Lord, go to the hands that used to set up snares and traps for me. Go to these people's houses that I don't necessarily agree with. Cornelius said, Lord, I will serve you, and I will invite this man into my house. In this middle ground was the empowerment of Miriam's song of praise and the reconciliation of Peter and Cornelius. This middle ground is too good for us to deny. Yes, we have different presuppositions. Yes, we don't look alike. Yes, we don't agree on everything. But one of the uh, translations, I believe it's Hebrew or Aramaic, excuse me, is pros proskuneo. And this term for worship means to bow down. And we just put it on a real plain level of bowing down to, to God. But sometimes we have to bow down to our own reservations for the sake of somebody else being freed and healed in them. I want to encourage you all. I'm going to speak to you all like family. My African-American students, I know that you miss a certain worship style. But do not deny yourself the beauty of the majority of worship style here on campus. My majority worship style family 
it is easy, so easy to find the Lord and to find the way that you worship in your own worship style. But please, you are denying yourself middle ground when you don't at least give way to what the Lord can do in a different worship style. Do you think Miriam had ever encountered a thing like Christ who could part the sea? No, that was for sure perspective nobody saw coming. But it was one that edified her. Peter and Cornelius' meet. Who knew? Did Cor Maybe Peter would have thought we'd be writing about him since Jesus was in his top five on MySpace. <laughs> but Cornelius didn't think we'd be talking about him tonight. November 13th, 2019, we're still talking about a different worship style. I admonish to you all, your worship style frees people that don't even look in bondage. I encourage you to meet me in this middle ground. Meet me here in this middle ground where we can talk about things that we don't necessarily see eye to eye with. Meet me in this middle ground where you can find safety and permission to be yourself. The Lord says, worship me in spirit and truth which means your worship style won't look like somebody else's because your testimony isn't the same. Yes. Yes. I hope you all heard my heart on this. And I wanna invite you all to a space to freely operate in your worship style. If you would, I'm gonna sing a little bit with our awesome worship team. And we're going to sing just about our common denominator. We're not going to look past him anymore and focus on our differences. This song says, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These songs will sing. For great are you, Lord, not Asia, not Melica, not Landon, not Isaac, not Danielle, not John, not Zach, not Miriam, not Peter, not Cornelius, but great are you, Lord, because that's all that matters anyway. So I'm going to ask that you all stand to your feet, please. Father, we ask that you forgive us. We ask that you forgive us for taking preference of our own worship style and shutting out everything that heaven has to offer us. It's in this moment where we realize just how important our differences are. It's important that we realize, Lord, who you want us to be for each other. So God, we say that we humbly submit. We submit all of our presuppositions, our grudges, our apprehensions, our theologies and philosophies, we submit them and ourselves to your will this morning, this evening. God, we ask that you search our hearts again, because that's the thing that matters in worship. Our hearts that are centered and focused on you brings about fruit from our worship and evidence in the room of your presence. God, we honor you, we love you, we love you. Help us to come to this middle ground willingly, willingly. We'll follow you wherever you call. We'll respond to whatever you've purposed our lives with. But help us to do so in the middle ground. Where you are, there is liberty. In your name we pray. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Sing great. Are you, Lord? You're great for everything that you're doing. All the earth will shout.
your praise on our lips. God, we say that you're truly worthy. You're truly worthy of our uncomfortability. You're truly worthy of the sacrifice that we need to make, Lord God, whatever it looks like, you are worthy of it. You're worthy of us meeting you at the middle ground. Call us and draw us with your loving kindness again, as you always have your gentle correction with Peter. We receive it tonight in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the fruit that should come from our lips and should come from our personal worship styles. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the glory and the power forever and ever. Would the redeemed of the Lord shout a hallelujah. Discover who you're called to be at Biola University, a leading Christ-centered university in Los Angeles, with programs on campus and online. Subscribe for more of our videos and learn more at biola.edu.